Hello, 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 everyone. I am Rosalind Brown of Your Wealth Guidance, where we help Black women create their financial independence roadmap and identify the tools for success so you can live your life on your own terms. I want to thank you for joining us today. Be sure to hit the subscribe and turn on notification buttons because each week we bring you valuable information on your journey. And so today we have Marcus Garrett. Marcus, I hope you are happy because we usually have women. Our big thing is mostly women. <laughs> but I had to bring Marcus on. He is a motivational speaker, recovering auditor, and number one Amazon Kindle bestselling author of Debt Free or Die Trying, How I Buried Myself $30,000 in debt and dug my way out in 36 months on his way to an 800 FICO score. And so I know that a lot of folks are like, okay, I can feel that. Like, that. <laughs> I'm right there with you. Um, so Marcus, one of the first questions I'll ask is, what was your wake up call to say, it's time, it's time for me to do something about this debt? Uh, I remember it exactly. I call it a rock bottom in the book. It was so by this point, I'm over twenty seven thousand dollars in debt. And we can talk a little bit about how I got to that point. I'm twenty seven years old and my rock bottom actually is preceding my rock bottom. I missed a credit card payment and overnight. Um, so at this point, I'm working three jobs overnight. That credit card mm -hmm. went to twenty nine point nine percent interest and I couldn't even make the minimum payment the next month. Oh but God. I had this credit card since college and I'm like, I'm just going to call my boys down there discover. We're going to work this out. You know, we cool. And they gave me a yo-yo back I've been besties for a while. <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm saying? We're just going to work this out. And it didn't go that way, as you can imagine, for anybody who's called a credit card company after you've missed a payment. And, you know, long story short, um, yeah, after, you know, I was like going to put discover on his ear. I was like, you know what? Cancel the car, close that mess. My utilization, my credit score all up, you know, for my ego. And I ended up having to pretty much beg for a consolidation loan next so I could put all my debt together and start to pay down my plan. I remember that night I was like, I'll, I'm never going to put myself in this position again. And that was ultimately I tell people that's when I started living the life that would become the book of debt free or die trying. I love that. That's one of the, you know, the, the ego thing is always big because when you have access to money, you know, it, when things change, when circumstances change, it can definitely kind of turn the wave in terms of what's going on. So uh, for people who are saying, I, you know, I'm, I'm especially today with rates are where they are, rates are going up, your minimum payment is going up. What is the first thing or what is the mindset change or kind of step one of, all right, I got to make a difference in where things are today? First, it, for me, it would be acknowledgement. I, I appreciate you saying that. So I was um, 30 when I or 27 when I started getting on this journey, 30 when I ultimately got out of it. And I was looking back today, uh, uh, doing some study for my own analysis. And I think when I was getting out of debt, interest rates were 10 to 14 percent. I, I think at that time, and it was a great rate. My credit card interest rate was around 9 percent. If interest rates on credit cards today are less than 18%, I'd be shocked. I'd, I'd have to look that up. Mortgages are almost 9%. <laughs> right, exactly. Uh, so I, I want to acknowledge that people are definitely living in, a, living in a different reality than I was at 30. But the plan is still the same because it's been the same the entire time. And you, you got to stop digging. So I was in debt digging myself further into the hole. And I describe it as I was already in the tsunami making minimum payments, but I didn't realize the wave had gone out. And when I missed that payment, that's when the wave came back in and I had to face all those consequences of those decisions. So I would tell people to get ahead of the curve on um, those. The book, the second version is actually actually an acronym. So it's a four step plan. It's defining the problem because like 60 percent of people don't even know what their debt load is, their debt to income. They definitely don't know their interest rates, as I just spoke about. In fact, people hearing me talk right now, are probably like 18 percent. I think I got a card. <laughs> oh, no, yeah, like 18 actually be pretty good. <laughs> so, <laughs> so you got to figure out your debt outlay. From there, establish your plan, which is E. B is build a budget. And then once you've got a system in place, you can actually trust the process. Oh, see, I think that makes a big. Now, when it comes to debt, and I know everybody does it a little bit different. Does it make sense to use like the old school Excel spreadsheet or 
I, I like it. It feels crazy. Or, you know, some of these apps or, you know, websites and so forth. Where should people go to say, I don't even know, you know, everybody kept sending me a credit card. So I got five, 10, 15 cards. I got this debt, maybe some student loan debt. Like what, what are some resources that people should be leaning on to even just get started and figure out how much do they have? So I laugh because not being dismissive, dismissive Excel spreadsheets, I'm sure there's some people offended that I was laughing at that. What I'm <laughs> laughing at is the, <laughs> the best system is the system that works. Um, so I can make some recommendations, but I'm going to recommend my favorite tools and I'm going to recommend those that I know about. So I, I don't know what I don't know. But when I got out of debt and they're still around, I use Bankrate. I remember going to because I this is how far back it was. I went to Yahoo. I don't even think Google was around. I was like, Yahoo.com. How do you put a debt plan together? And bankrate.com slash calculators came up, still around. And I remember typing in my debt. They got an unlimited amount of calculators, it feels like, but everything that you can think of. And in that case, it, it, I literally printed out a PDF. I think it went down to Kinko's to get it. But that being said, <laughs> Bankrate is still a great tool. If you do want to automate it, uh, NerdWallet is another great tool for some automated tools. In fact, NerdWallet is one of the top budgeting apps that I recommended. So I looked at YNAB, you need a budget, NerdWallet easy dollar or every dollar i don't know you know mis misrepresent i actually think that's dave ramsey so i definitely sh i definitely shouldn't misrepresent that one you know, you know his people come out of nowhere <laughs> exactly open for sponsorship mr ramsey for the every dollar but that being said i chose nerd wallet as one of the best comprehensive budgeting tools and what i liked about it the reason i chose that one is i could get up and running the same day i use mint for like 10 years and i think anybody currently or in the past using mint you know you gotta spend half your month like recalculating and recalibrating your budget like i want something that works when i open it right now nerd wallet is one of my favorite tools and they have a bunch of comprehensive debt management tools as well and then in terms of a budget so if you're like okay i'm a you know and i've used mint too um definitely i think mint is kind of old school too i feel like you know the <laughs> Like that mint was popular more back in the day, but um, and I feel like they were, you know, they were like a beyond the times way back when. But um, to figure out your budget, so sometimes that's a hard thing because people are like, well, if I'm paying all my bills today, do I really need the budget? You know, if I'm making it check to check, or they just don't know how much should they be allocating to certain things. Um, you know, should they be spending 50% of their paycheck on eating out or 30%? Like, how do they know what ratios actually even make sense? So once again, I think it's going to be the system that works for you. But the one that does work for me and another reason I like NerdWallet currently in beta phase, I want to be very clear, is they already have a 50, 30, 20 budget set up. So when you log into NerdWallet, I spent probably five years trying to get my categories to align with a 50, 30, 20 budget. And I'm going to talk a little bit about what that is with mint never was successful. And I do this, I've been doing this for 10 years and I'm an auditor by trade. So if I couldn't figure out how to do it in mint, that's why I can't in good faith recommend it to people because it's too difficult of a tool to use for some basic functionality that I would expect to have at this time. Uh, with nerd, you can actually categorize your payments by the percentages that you want to use. So the 50, 30, 20 budget is still pretty popular. And it's one that I recommend in my book. And I recommend it for people to who want to get out of debt because it, it really stratifies and categorizes uh, the areas that you, you want to allocate your money. So it's 50 for needs, 30 for wants and 20 percent for saving or investing. So if you paid off your debt, you would put that towards saving the investment. If you still have debt, you could allocate that towards. And we could talk a little bit about the snowball or an avalanche, although most people are familiar with the snowball. Uh, avalanche will save you more money. Snowball is you take your lowest debt, pay it off and you snowball that towards your largest debt until you start to pay off um, whatever debt that you may have. And as you, you're hearing, I, I personally don't have a preference for this system this tool. I'm agnostic to all the systems in the tool, but you need to have a system and you need to have a tool. <laughs> and so like you're saying, I guess the answer to your question is, do you need a budget? Yes. You, you need a budget. You need a concept <laughs> of a budget. You need to know where your money's going. A lot of people just run out of money and they still have month at the end of that money. So if you're in that position, you need something. And then I can recommend, I like you know, doing client facing and recommending like a tool that will work for you as an individual. Once I kind of get to know like what makes you run, really? What 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 puts your personal and personal finance? And as I've gotten more in this lane, I also try to find 
So it's just not all vegetables. <laughs> like what excites you? What's going to make you stick to this? And usually I help people find their purpose because that's really what's going to drive you after you set this system up. And see, I guess you were reading the mind, uh, the Detroit love. She says, does everyone need a budget? <laughs> so, I would say, yeah, not everyone needs a budget, um, but it is a starting point. So what I would say for most people is to set up budget at least once. Uh, and like I said, with Nerd Wallet, which I continue to plug it, you can automate it. So if you set it up in January, you don't have to look at it again for the next 11 months. You can just check in like, OK, driven by my purpose. Uh, so I just came up with my purpose statement. My purpose statement from Simon Sinek's Find Your Why was to be financially independent so I can do whatever the I want. And I don't know <laughs> if I can curse on this show. Yes. Uh, but I was like, what's going to drive me? the next 11 months after the new year's resolution is kind of worn off and February is not as exciting. And as you were talking about when we started the show, it's already April. I'm starting to forget about that new year's resolution, but I still want financial independence and I still want to do whatever I want. So I can be driven by that for the next 11 months. And then you can kind of inform your budget from that. And if you got it automated and I said, you've got a good tool that you know works, you can just go and look at it and say, I said that my purpose was to be you know, debt free at the end of 2023 you know, mimosas and, and Sunday fun day is not moving me towards that goal. And I look at my budget here and if I had my little mimosa budget or whatever your fun budget is and that's been misallocated, you're like, OK, I've spent that for this month or this or whatever you're, you tied it to. But at least I know why it's not like, man, I, I just can't have fun because Marcus got me on this budget. You know, Marcus <laughs> ain't do nothing. Marcus <laughs> asked you what's going to drive you from day to day and help you stick to this plan for you to reach your goal or purpose. <laughs> we have someone said they like your why can they use it for themselves <laughs> they like we I, copy that <laughs> yeah go, go ahead and copy it uh you know it's not it's not trademark <laughs> <laughs> not but yet. what i would say is, yeah exactly is uh i i say that'd be trademark tomorrow um i strongly encourage to find your own because mine might not guide you that far you might be excited right now but you know you, you wake up next week like is my purpose going to dr continue to drive you that's all I would say to that. Now, when you meet with people, you've talked to people over time, you talk to them about their budget and their plan. What's the number one thing that maybe either gets people off track or prevents them from actually reaching their goals? It's not fun. I, it, it's like anything that requires discipline. What's the saying? Uh, distraction is the enemy of discipline. And so as you I'll use New Year's resolution again, because one, it wasn't that far. It wasn't that far away yet. Probably everybody on the show forgot what the New Year's resolution was, <laughs> which kind of proves my point. <laughs> uh, and so I, I use that as an example of you You set this goal. And I did the same thing uh, where it's like I want to be debt free by uh, at 22. Actually, when I graduated college, I said I want to be debt free by 30. For two reasons, thirty seemed old <laughs> in my in my twenty two year old mind. I was like, oh, thirty, and it seemed like those thirty year old kids. <laughs> exactly. It seemed forever away, and so I put no plan together, had no strategy, and actually got into more debt because I didn't have a system, I didn't have a purpose. What I had was a dream, you know. And as many of us who have had dreams, probably had a dream last night, you know, that it's hard to follow that from day to day when things get hard. And so that's why I say to have a system in place, a system runs. And I tell people to automate it. Your system runs the last step in the plan. Trust the process on the days you don't feel like getting up when the days you don't feel like moving the money around. We on the days you don't feel like playing, paying master's card like your system is going to automate it for you. And even though you're upset that you had to you know, give twenty dollars or however much it is to the master's card, you're still going to be able to tie that back to that didn't feel good that month but I know it's moving me towards my purpose. So I'll be in a better place at the end of this year. I think that the one, that's a really good point. And my question would be, and I always think of um, like getting out of debt, almost like weight loss. Like sometimes you like in it, you are laser focused and then you hit your goal and you'd be like back to cheesecake. And so how do you prevent yourself from celebrating one minute and going to the mall or, you know, whatever it is that your thing is, and then you end up back in debt. I would say, and I, I've evolved over this over time, although I think it's captured in the book, is it's okay. Well, it's two things. It's okay to celebrate the wins is what I was going to say with that thought. And it's okay to fall off and fail. Um, 
as long as you get back on, which is why the system's in place, uh, you know, going back to to weight loss, the, the system is the, the calorie planning. The system is the app that you're using to track your calories. The system will exist. <laughs> That's how I don't my, see the system is how I pick up my life. <laughs> <laughs> so the, the system works. <laughs> uh, and so you have a system in place to ensure that you have something to follow on those days when you're feeling undisciplined. Where once again, you know, distraction is the enemy of discipline. And I think it's good to acknowledge that this will be a difficult journey. And that's why I think you have to sprinkle in those wins. I have to sprinkle, like if I make my debt payment successfully for the next three months, or if you're starting from scratch, maybe the next month, here is something that is going to incentivize that. I'm going to reward myself with this. Maybe you do go to the mall. Maybe you do go shopping for your thing. Maybe your debt-free payment plan includes, I'm going to put $100 or I'll put $70 aside for debt planning that I pay out debt and $30 aside for this thing that I want to buy. Now, people might say, and that's $90. I ain't going to be able to buy me the things that I need in my life. <laughs> that being said, whatever your goal is, you can tie like your wins to it so that when you get to whatever your benchmark would be, like if you were losing weight, if I lose 10 pounds, I'll be able to do this. To answer your question, though, you don't want to unravel it. And most people will unravel it if they don't have a system in place. I think it's the Marines that say, when you don't have a system in, oh, well, there might be some military and listening audience. So I, <laughs> I apologize. I'm about to butcher this. But when you don't have a system in place, you fall back to your training. So if you haven't been training, you have a system in place. That's what you're going to fall back to. So most people fall back to, like you said, getting into debt, spiraling to bottom because they have not been disciplined and trained themselves to stand up the, through the test of time when things get difficult. And, and that's OK. I think I think. That's actually more representative of us. That's why the Marines exist. <laughs> Someone said, I'm always trying to treat myself. So you got you to gotta, you gotta uh, figure out when you're going to treat yourself. You can't, can't always be. <laughs> right. But or you got to find some cheap ways to treat yourself. So you might want to do just, some, you know, some, not quite Gucci, but you know, maybe something <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> So maybe just a pedicure or something like that. Uh, now, for people who are like, that's cute if I had money. But for folks who like, listen, I'm not making it to the end of the month. I got these bills already. I can't even get where I am today through month to month. And, you know, maybe they're using the credit cards for their basic needs or they're going you know, into overdraft. Thank goodness things have changed and it isn't like the overdraft fees of before. So what about those people who are already like, listen, I am drowning. How do I talk about a budget when I am literally drowning at this moment? I'm going to start again with an acknowledgement. Uh, and I would say the world is never as cheap. The, ne the world will never be as cheap as it is today. Uh, the quote that, the, that I'm, I'm changing that from is actually from technology. The world will never be as slow as it is today. Um, inflation is high as ever been, as I said, as a result, interest rates are as high as they've ever been. So the world has, it's, it's, it's cheap today as it will ever be. It'll be more expensive tomorrow. <laughs> uh, and so I think it's key to acknowledge that. And I, I unfortunately feel that too many in this space, which I'll call personal finance, don't even acknowledge that it's just, you know, uh, pull yourself up by your bootstraps when you ain't got no boots and you barely got socks on. That's a little bit difficult to do. So there's that. And for the person that's drowning, of which I can relate to and have been in, uh, I think that's actually the focus. I think a lot of people think the focus is, well, I got to get out of debt. Um, I got to you know, do this and I've got to do it by this imaginary benchmark. For me, it was 30, um, whatever yours may be. It actually may be, well, maybe I need more money first. Maybe I need to find a way to to see if, how do I stop drowning? And the other metaphor is, you know, how do I put my oxygen mask on first because I can barely breathe? Instead of focusing on, you know, the plane's going down, maybe you need to focus on breathing first because that step one is taking care of yourself. And unfortunately, you know, I don't have a universal answer for everybody as far as if you're drowning today. But for me, it was, I, like I said, when I was at that minimum payment place, I had three jobs. And I wouldn't recommend it, but I, I did what needed to be necessary to get me to a place where I could put my oxygen mask on, focus on what's going on around me. It gave, got me to a place where I could breathe. I had a full time job. I was selling phones and I was putting uh, computers together in a warehouse. Contract job, contract job, contract job plus commission in the nine to five. And this was in the 2000s. And that was just to make it. 
So I, I joke a lot about I'm an elder millennial. So I joke a lot with the elder millennials now is we were the side hustlers in the passive income. We just didn't have hashtags for it, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and so I think that's that's the starting point. Um, and it's probably not the answer that people like, but I do I hope that people are hearing that, that it's acknowledgement that paycheck to paycheck is a very real reality. And some people need to escape that first, then they can start looking at their debt plan. And I think that goes hand in hand. So there's one, the first set of folks that are just like, listen, I can't even think about a budget. I am just trying to make sure that I can have food until the next paycheck. And then there's the next set of people that are kind of struggling and they're right there with, all right, you know, I get paid tomorrow and there's $10 in my account. So those people are trying to think, should I be saving or should I be paying off debt? And so for people who are kind of at that, I don't know which one, how did they determine which one makes the most sense? I would actually say in that scenario, both of those persons, whether they realize it or not, would probably need that, at least that first starter budget. Because a lot of people that I both read about and meet with as clients, they actually don't know how much money they have or where it's going. I, I, I meet a lot of people and I'm like, you know, how much do you make before taxes or after taxes? They, they can't answer the question off the top of the head. They got to like go to an account and, oh, yeah, here's my biweekly paycheck. And especially, I mean, to be fair, a lot of people are contractors and sporadic pay. As I say, a lot of people doing side hustles and passive income. I get it. But a lot of people actually don't know how much they make. They just know they're out of it at the end of the month. So I think it is a good worthwhile exercise to honestly do that, because a lot of people are probably saying right now, I, I know how much I make. I know how much I spend. But if you did, I don't think we'd be here or you wouldn't be fascinated with this part of the conversation. So I really think <laughs> it's good to sit down honestly and go line item by line item. And some people are hearing that and already zoning out and thinking how painful that it is. And that's why I go back to that nerd wallet tool. Like I connected my accounts because I was doing this for a video review. 15 minutes. Um, and I didn't even connect three of them because I was just trying to see how each uh, app worked. And it, it, using that example, like I'm not making recommendations that I haven't done myself. I'm walking the walk and talking the talk as well. So I signed up for five apps. So you can pick the one that I recommend, which is Nerd Wallet, or you can sign up for five. They all take about five minutes to connect your accounts and see which one works for you. See, like, is this a system that I can use from month to month? Is this something that would actually work for me? And then both of those people would be able to answer that question because what I like, Mint does this as well, is there's a graph right there when I open the app. It's like, here's how you spent your money this month. <laughs> and sometimes I don't like the graph. I didn't like it this month. <laughs> I really? like in the restaurants. I'm like, I, I thought it was an, a mistake. I'm like, man, this can't all be restaurants. And I got to the bottom. And it, was, that. <laughs> it was a variety of restaurants. And I had a, that's the thing. I enjoyed the month. I had a wonderful month. Me and my wife are having time of our lives, apparently. And I was like, let me, let me log in this app and see how we did. And I, I did not like how that looked. And now, you know, really only the adjustment is I, I got to do some things differently the next month. I, a, I need to have a conversation with the wife. <laughs> <laughs> at, least, at least on my side, you know, on my side, it might be the, the whiskey might not be as fine and as you're going to have to get water with lemon and yeah, a, as and it a was sugar in packet. February. <laughs> uh, for those, you know, for my whiskey drinkers, it might not be whistle pig. I might not be reaching up to that top shelf as fast as I used to, but you know what? A little Hennessy will still get me to the same place. I'm going to arrive at it's the same slower. location. <laughs> and like, I, I, I'm not ignorant of it. I, I know it's like, hey, Marcus, you, you slipped up on the budget that you said was your purpose. It didn't align with your 50, 30, 20 goals. Like you, you are informed. Now, do you want to act differently? And I, I said this on a different show. I could have been informed and be like, yeah, I had the time of my life. I'm going to act up again this month. You know, in fact, I'm going to double down. Like, but at least it would be an informed decision. That's all I'm asking people to do. And I think this is a good point, too, because oftentimes, even if we are reformed and, you know, they talk about if you're an alcoholic, you're always alcoholic. If you're a spender, you might always be a spender. So you're always trying to check yourself. But then when you bring in another party, so, you know, you have your wife and somebody comes in and you, I don't know why it always happens. Somebody a spender and somebody a saver. And, you know, it's two different personalities. How do you come to terms and say, this is our money philosophy, or this is our budget philosophy. This is how we're going to plan as one, opposed to this is how we've been living before. Let me fully disclose that I've been married for a whole two quarters. So with my six months, 
<laughs> six months of expertise. But what I think we did well, and I, I've been able to, you know, disclose this uh, as well all through, for all the years is, you know, she knew I had a book. She knew I was debt free. Like, so it's a little bit easier. Kind of, I want to be fully, you know, it's not a new conversation for me to have. Uh, she met me when I was writing a blog at that time. That being said, I do think that you need to have the conversation while I also recognize, especially for people who have never had it, how difficult that conversation may be. I, I've talked to people that have been married for years and never talked about money. Um, and I think this is where I differ with my six months of expertise on that. This is not a 50 50 conversation for most couples, because to your point, it is usually there's a personality type or usually there's a, a story or a life that you've lived or an expectation that you have. And what I mean by it's not 50 50 is we're not coming to this table, splitting bills, 50 50 investments, 50 50. Um, you're you're going to be on a 50 30 20 budget because that has worked for me. It's more here are the tools that have worked for me that I've seen that have made me successful financially. What do you think about those? Would you like to use this tool? Do you have a tool? Do you have any tool? And that way I'm not a, even though as a personal finance expert and author, it's not like I, I'm going to tell you what to do and you're going to do it this way. It's here are things that have worked for me and we have had the conversation. And, you know, I try to be very transparent. I told you when I started this conversation, I was going to be very transparent as well. And I just kind of prided myself in the last two years. We probably handle our finances different than most people would expect, but we have a joint account for our bills. And then we have our own accounts and I have eight I have it. and I have to count from time to time, mm -hmm. uh, but I have eight different accounts four for the business. And that's because that's what works for me. Uh, I think my wife has three. Yeah, that's what works for me. And even as you hear me thinking and, and going through that in real time, as long as the, the mortgage and the, the joint bills are paid, I really don't like, what are you, what are you doing over there? You know, how did that, there's Amazon packages coming all the time. Like, hey, <laughs> The mortgage is paid. Don't like, those. <laughs> yeah. More, more Amazon packages for you. Make it rain. I don't care. Um, so that is, you know, my six months of expertise, the system that has worked for us. But I think thematically you're seeing a lot of people who are just like, well, I'm just not going to have the conversation. System's not working. You're living paycheck to paycheck. You're pointing fingers at each other, gossiping to each other on Instagram and, <laughs> and Twitter, and, you know, making snide comments. But y'all haven't had a conversation around it. But I think it starts with you set yours up and like, here's here's some things that are working for me. Can we now have a conversation around this? And this question, especially for the ladies out there, they're getting their life together. They're going to be good in a few months. So they meet somebody and they drown in debt. Should you jump in that boat with that person? Like, should should that be a deal breaker? And this ain't a relationship topic, kind of, sort of, maybe. But it's definitely a money topic. <laughs> Should they say, how much debt you got? Are you paying your bills? Are you saving? You know, maybe date two. Maybe not. Maybe not. Yeah, one, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I want to sign a date number to it. I do think it's a conversation that should take place. I would say probably before you get serious and definitely before you get married. Um, I think you should definitely talk about money and some type of some type of aspect. And I've out, outlined what I think you should cover. Uh I actually have an episode that I'd recommend for that. So I interviewed, if y'all don't follow them already, they're a great couple to follow. It's Rich by Intention. They paid off 123000 I use them because, you know, th what's 30000 to that? And they're a married couple and that's their entire space. So, you know, once again, I don't know what I don't know. I've, I'm in this for six years. I think they're they're further along the lines than me and they have a child. Uh, another one I would say is Rich and Regular because um, they're a married couple. They have a book. They have a child and they're on the financial independence retire early plan. Both of these people are on uh, Instagram and they're on YouTube. I've done interviews with both of them. You want to just find them on my YouTube channel. Um, but I, yeah, I, I think it's a conversation that needs to play, take place. Whether it's a deal breaker is a personal decision. But it's only a personal decision you can make informed by that conversation. I think that's a good point. Somebody said the money is just as important as the children question. So definitely don't don't slide by that. You know, make sure you bring that up after. At, see if he order a whistle pig or Hennessy. Um, <laughs> <laughs> be like, wait, let me see, see what kind of money you're working with. <laughs> he ordering whistle pig. That's a good dude. Solid brother. Right, hello. How much money you got if you ordered that whistle pig? You got good uh, taste. Good taste. <laughs> <laughs> and underdog says a few older couples told us some time ago that a good financial setup is a joint account for bills and separate personal accounts. 
Um, so I think, you know, that's kind of the setup that you have too. So it kind of depends, but it's a conversation to be had before you, you know, start sharing a household that you know how you're going to share those deals. Right. And I know um, you got to hop in a minute. So definitely give us some uh, last minute tips information, guidance, because, you know, we're going to be debt free in 2023. So what are some of those steps? He has a book. Um, make sure that you check it out. It is zero dollars on Kindle Unlimited. So if you got your Kindle Unlimited, go ahead and get, you know, go and get that tonight. Um, but it is right here. I dropped the link in the chat so you can go ahead and make that purchase tonight. Um, and then any closing comments for the people? Yeah, I would tell folks I'm going to assume that we're looking for uh, deals right here. So I, I give all this content away for free. I, I'm very active on Instagram. I'm universally branded under the Marcus Garrett, but I'm most active on YouTube. A lot of the conversations I talked about today are on YouTube, youtube.com slash the Marcus Garrett. And if you enjoyed this episode, I also have a podcast at the Marcus Garrett show where every week I have entertaining conversations with your favorite influencers and entrepreneurs about life after debt so those will be all the platforms and of course you can reach out to me directly at any of those platforms i love it thank you so much for joining us today if you have any other questions i dropped the marcus garrett that's instagram that's all in all the places um check out the book that'll give you some good guidance in order to get started tell us again what debt stands for define the problem establish a plan build a budget and trust the process and on that that's all we need to say. I can't wait to see you all next week. Um, next week is a treat um, because today we're talking about getting out of debt. But at the end of the day, if you were making some more money, you can get out of debt quicker. And our speaker next week is going to talk about a creative way to get you some more money quicker. So until then, thank you so much for joining us. Make sure you hit the subscribe button. Join us again next week and have a wonderful evening. <laughs>